Over notes on 3OW and our media expert is Nick Hayes. He joins us now. Hello there, Nick. Good morning, Pat. Good morning, Mark. Good day, Nick. How are you doing? Oh, mate, going all right, but I'm a little bit concerned, actually. Just, just from the outset, mm. if Mike Brady is over here in Western Australia, yes. I'm a little bit concerned. I, I never got an invite. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he didn't ring me. I, I, I go out of my way when I'm, when I'm in Melbourne to come yeah. down and see him. Uh, yeah. Noted, noted. Oh. Yes, that's right. Sorry, Nick. He did say to us, if you're talking to Nick, don't mention that I'm in <laughs> Western Australia, I don't want to see him. Oops. Oh, well, you've, you've, you've done yourselves in. <laughs> We've done ourselves in. Now, uh, well, well can... no, I hope he's doing well. I hope he's probably... Uh, this is the special time of the year for Mike Brady. I mean, there's, there's no man, you know, better known for his football jingles than, uh, than Mike, and if he's doing a little bit of singing... Uh, no mm. one can blame him from heading over here and doing a little bit. He's, he's just as popular here in Western Australia as he is in Melbourne. This is his chance to top up his superannuation. <laughs> That's right. And uh, West Australians love their AFL, don't they? They do, and unfortunately they're a little disappointed this weekend because Fremantle out in straight sets. So, uh, you know what, I'm a little bit, uh, I'll be a little bit cheeky, but I'm, I'm over the moon that they're out because I'm a North Melbourne supporter and we're through to the last four. Mm. And uh, oh, I'm just quietly celebrating and quite, you know, quite frankly, I think we could almost go all the way. But look, I won't, I won't overdo it. We'll, we'll talk about this next week and see where we're at. Because uh, all the experts this week will be saying that the Roos won't be able to win, but uh, it's good to be the, the underdog sometimes. Yeah, it's good to be the underdog. And you know what, quite frankly, most North Melbourne supporters out there will probably say the same. They'll just go, look, you know, we probably didn't expect to be uh, where we are right now, but uh, you've got to be in it to win it. Yep. And uh, I'm, I'm glad we're in the top four. Now, media, that's why you're here. The uh, community TV station, Channel 31, may, well, it's gone, is it? Has it been axed? It's gone. It's gone. Malcolm Turnbull last week came out with one of the most unbelievable statements and one that shocked the entire community television network right around the country. So it's not just Channel 31 in Melbourne, Geelong. It's also to Sydney, Brisbane, uh, Adelaide and Perth are all losing their community television station licences by the end of 2015. Why, Nick? Yeah, well, there's, I think there's a couple of reasons. There's a couple of reasons. Malcolm Turnbull can see that there's going to be a dollar at the end of it if he goes away and sells the, the bandwidth, if you like, the space that's on and available for, channel, uh, for the community channels to, uh, to take uh, advantage of broadcasting on a free-to-air television. That's one opportunity. I OK, think. so he's going to sell off the, the, their sort of space on the, uh, the spectrum in a way. Do they broadcast on... It's been a little while since I've watched um, Channel 31, and I did some stuff on Channel 31 when I lived in Geelong, so I'm fond of the TV station. So are they analogue or digital? Digital. Right. So all the channel, all the community television stations, it's the fifth digital station. What it actually means is that the government is, and even though Channel 31 has been given a licence and it was renewed only last year till 2019, they've now taken that away and said, no, nah, you will finish at the end of next year and uh, if you want, you can go away and uh, start broadcasting on the internet, which we know is the death now for, for any television station because once you leave the network and once you're not freely available on free-to-air television, it's going to disappear. But, Pat, you just said exactly what a lot of us in media have been talking about. A lot of us got a start or had, you know, contributed to community television in some form, whether it be in the production side or whether it be in the news side or yeah. in the recording or in the studio. And also community radio was a big part of my sort of uh, start in the media as well, community TV and community radio. It's such an important thing. And, I, and the reason I'm so passionate about it is because while the commercial radio stations and the ABC networks, etc., is all out there and they're doing their bit and it's highly professional, there's no doubt about it, Community television and community radio is the nursery for tomorrow's media people, for Absolutely. tomorrow's journalists, for and tomorrow's presenters. You volunteer to be on community TV and community radio, and by coincidence, Mark and I, we volunteer to do this too. We, we, sort of, we, don't, we, don't, we don't get paid for this, we just come in for fun. <laughs> Personally, I'm a company man, so no. That's right. No, we, know, we, know, well, we know that Mark's a company man. He'll do anything for the company. Of course. And, uh, and, and we, we salute him for that. And, hey, uh, Nick, is and the harsh then, reality uh, that Channel 31 is no longer relevant and we're being too tough on them? 
Look, I think there's a couple of things. Look, there'll be a lot of the listeners out. Love to hear from your listeners tonight whether they actually watch any of the programs on Channel 31 and, and to see if there is anything there that uh, they do like and they do watch because it's such an important part of the whole media spectrum. Look, Malcolm Turnbull saying that uh, no more than 6,000 viewers are watching community television at any one time around the country, and that's not a big number. Um, mm. he, that's what he's using as a reason. Right. I mentioned that he might potentially looking to sell it. Now, last week, he didn't come out and say, look, I'm going to be selling that licence off. And the kind of organisation or business that might buy it, where, where we're losing something here is just something that is locally made, produced, and I mentioned it earlier, it's the nursery of tomorrow's media. Yeah. People like Hamish and Andy, Andy and Hamish, or Hamish, Hamish and Andy, yeah. the, the radio people, they started there in Melbourne. Rove um, McManus. Rove McManus over here in the West had a start on West TV. Yes. This, Vasily, you know, Vasily's Garden. Yes, Vasily's Garden. <laughs> and the, oh, look, the four He's on 3 AW. Hey, Nick, do you know who Vasily is, by the way? I think I do. Yeah. I think I've, I oh, think yeah, I've he's it. big, he's big here. Oh, in yeah, no, no, we get it over here as well. Oh, great, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, look, it, you, you, you'll find yourself switching over, and I, I actually did a couple of shows for... I started a program over here called Undercurrent. It was a, a local um, current affairs program, and I didn't think anyone was watching it, but people spotted me in the street and said, oh, yeah, you're the guy. Really? I thought, well, they threw rocks at me at the same time, <laughs> but it was still they recognised me. But, uh, <laughs> look, it's... It's something that is quite special, yeah. and I'm a little worried that if uh, Malcolm Turnbull has made this decision to go away and raise money, it might not necessarily be the right channel because, quite frankly, these, these, uh, these community television stations right around the country don't take any money from the federal government. They're all self-funded. In fact, Channel 31 in Melbourne turns over $2.5 million in sponsorship. So it's self-funding, and they're bringing it together. It's local and there's something special about it. Uh, Malcolm Turnbull, you mentioned him. Can I ask you about the uh, the media uh, ownership laws? Was he supposed to relax those laws where in every market, um, this is off uh, off the script, by the way, Nick, so it's a question without notice. Sure. He was going to um, change that, but he sort of backed away from that. So am I right to say that uh, a commercial body can't own a newspaper, too many newspapers or TV stations or radio stations in the one market and own too much of that voice and control with what is coming out in the media? Um, he was going to change that, wasn't he? He was going to. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, opposition to that. I think in today's market he could get away with it. I think there's no problems with it now because we're not just talking about radio, television and newspapers. There's online media as well. We're talking a far a lot more competition that's going on. That's right. That's my feelings too because those laws are outdated now because they talk about TV, print and uh, radio. But as you say, there's social media now, there's internet. It's very fractured. So uh, it needs to be updated how they regulate uh, you know, media ownership. Oh, my word, they, they need to look at it. And if pe pe people are prepared to spend money in this market, then, you know, we'll, we'll all welcome it because uh, we've all seen the decline of some of the television networks and some of the newspapers out there because of the, the fall in circulation figures and the, and the fall in viewing numbers. I'd love to see a lot more competition. But, look, the, the, thing, with channel, the, the, the thing with community TV, it's, it's not there. It's not groundbreaking stuff. Um, in fact, a lot of the programs, they're not expecting you to watch from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. But what they are, they've got some very specialist kind of programming, and it gives a voice to some people within the community that just don't have a voice. And uh, for me, that's something quite special. And I continue to watch my local community ch channel, and when I'm in Melbourne, I even switch to Channel 31 to see what's on. And, you know, you can, squ you can squirm at some of the programming. Yeah, it's not always red hot, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, there, but it's part of its good shows on there. Yeah, and it's part of its appeal. It's raw. It's real. There's people on there just giving it a go, and it's fascinating to uh, to watch. Yeah, and hopefully they've uh, they're, they're going to put on a little bit of a fight. I do know that this week there was a suggestion there from Channel Thirty One, whose general manager happens also to be the secretary for the whole community channel uh, networks. There, he's put out the idea that one of the SBS digital channels may be an opportunity there for the uh, community TV to take on that uh, as a broadcasting platform. Uh, that's been quickly rejected by Malcolm Turnbull already. 
So his intention to get them to go online, I think, is really the death knell for, for community television because this, the, the kind of audiences that watch community TV aren't really those that will watch online. And we all know that the sponsorship online is far more difficult to get and also, too, it's not nearly the sizable amounts that they can achieve if they're on a free-to-air TV channel. Yes, I agree. I think the jury is still out with... On, I get the social media and the internet, but I think as far as raising money and getting revenue via online advertising versus traditional media, um, I reckon that's still, um, still out there. Uh, now, September is a month where there's a lot on, and there's a Friday in the month of September where the bad news comes out. Tell me more, Nick. <laughs> this is, this <laughs> what am I talking about? September because we're all confused and, and uh, we're all watching very heavily, focused on what's going on in the AFL. One of the great times, and I, I mentioned this last year, and, and it's, it's the ne- this Friday and next Friday is the great time for any organisation, whether it be political, whether it be a big, big, big uh, company, ASX-listed company, If they're going to put out bad news, it's the best day to go away and put out bad news. And the reason being, after 11 o'clock on a Friday, we all start switching off and turning our attention towards the AFL, if you're living in Victoria, if you're living in Adelaide or if you're living in Perth. Um, not so much in Perth at the moment with the two football teams out, but uh, and, if, and it's the NRL finals in Sydney and Brisbane. This is the key time for all the communications giants, all the public relations people out there. They are putting together uh, their little bad news pieces because if they've got to get it out, this is the best time to go away and deliver it. Because it gets lost the in the time, yeah, it gets no lost in the watching. Right, okay, yeah, it gets lost in the in, in all the uh, footy fever with the NRL and the AFL. Uh, yeah. Political parties do that as well. Yeah, that's, that, that's a bit of a trick with them too. Yeah, they do. It. And, and it's, it, it happens every year, and I've been observing it for the last 15 years. They are unbelievable. They will, they'll leave it right till about uh, 11 o'clock news, then deliver it, and uh, especially before a grand final. If it's the Friday before a grand final, the news is just, uh, it's just lost in, uh, in the furor that is uh, the AFL Grand Final, and, uh, and it's a great time to deliver it. But I'm just giving a warning out to all the listeners out there. Yeah, watch out for that time and, and, and keep an eye on the news, and you'll, you'll, watch, you'll see a few little negative things. Not that I'm always looking for negative news, but uh, it's, uh, it's a time that uh, the communications people like <laughs> to uh, put out some of their bad stories. Yeah, and you could use that example at home too. If you've got any bad news for your wife or husband or somebody <laughs> when the footy's on, when they're distracted you can just drop it and walk out of the room <laughs> it's a nice little trick isn't it it's not a bad one, I didn't think of that what Although, sort of bad news will be looking for you know, I guess everything just what, what they don't want oh, attention uh, well, they, it, it's the things that they don't they don't want the, the, the Neil Mitchells of the world to, uh, to focus on, they don't want um, the, uh, the basically being scrutinised uh, earlier in the week and, and having any attention drawn to it, so it's it's a time, even ASX listed companies are very well known for doing it because it's a time they just don't want it, the share price to be affected by it or, or given too much time in radio, print or TV. So it's a, it's a special time, but it's a time for, for, special for the communications people to, to get things out. And uh, normally by the end of the weekend, everyone's forgotten about it. Okay, Nick, we appreciate your time there in Western Australia. You can go and see uh, Mike Brady now. Uh, well, it's not the, he's probably done his performance by he's now. He'll be but, flying uh, back, actually. Uh, that's right. Um, he'll be yeah. flying back. But I tell you what, no, if, 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 oh, I might be able to get to the I might be able to get to the airport and give him a, a little bit of a send off and tell him what I think of him. Well, I, I, I do think he sent you an, uh, an SMS. I believe he did. Oh, here it comes now. There it is there now. It is, yeah. <laughs> Meet you at the airport in half an hour, Nick, and we'll catch up. <laughs> Mike. Oh, well, we'll look forward to catching him next week. Okay. Thank you very much. Nick Hayes, our media expert here on Overnights on 3AW.